These days, sequels are the name of the game in Hollywood, but there are some times when movies that set up for sequels never actually get them. It's usually because of critical or commercial failure, like in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and The Green Lantern, but sometimes it can be for a whole host of other reasons. With that in mind, I'm Will for WhatCulture.com and this is six comic book movie endings that really needed a sequel. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, dong. Number six, Man of Steel. While it was originally intended just to set up its own series of Superman films, Man of Steel ultimately ended up kicking off the entire DC cinematic universe. We got Batfleck, which led into Batman vs Superman, and finally Justice League. But none of that is really a direct sequel to Man of Steel. The end of the movie saw Clark Kent in his iconic role at the Daily Planet as a reporter, and it set the groundwork for loads of great Superman adventures. In fact, there's so much cool stuff they could have done. We've yet to have Brainiac. I would love to see Mixie in there at some point. But unfortunately, it looks like it's just never going to happen. Number five, The Incredible Hulk. So the end of The Incredible Hulk didn't spawn a sequel per se, but it did help establish the biggest movie franchise in film history. Unfortunately, 10 years on after its release, The Incredible Hulk seems pretty much forgotten about. Bruce Banner is now, of course, played by the incredible Mark Ruffalo, and rather than being in control of the Hulk, as it seems he is at the end of The Incredible Hulk movie, he's pretty much at odds with the Green Goliath across the entire of the MCU. There are a few reasons why the film hasn't happened, from rights issues to questions whether the Hulk can work as a standalone character, but it's just weird that they've left so much up in the air, like Bruce Banner's relationship with Betty. Number four, Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. Hellboy 2 finishes not just with the Golden Army being defeated, but with the eponymous demon ready to take on his biggest challenge yet, parenthood. After he and Liz resign, it's revealed that she is in fact pregnant with twins. Del Toro has tried numerous times over the last 10 years to get the sequel off the ground, but unfortunately, it has been revealed that the series will be rebooted rather than have the third installment made. This unfortunately means that we'll never see the conclusion to Del Toro's trilogy, which was supposed to go to some very interesting places, including Hellboy's role as a father and also his inevitable destiny as a beast of the apocalypse. Number three, Batman Returns. Over 25 years after its release, Batman Returns is a somewhat underrated entry in the comic book movie genre. Too dark and weird for Warner Brothers, they decided to move the franchise into a more family-friendly, marketable direction, which unfortunately meant Tim Burton and Michael Keaton departed from the series. This is a shame because it would have been so cool to see a full Batman Burton trilogy, or even, as the movie sort of sets up, a solo Catwoman movie with Michelle Pfeiffer. And let's face it, it could never have been as bad as the Halle Berry version that we got. Okay, number two, Dread. Although it pretty much crashed at the box office back in 2012, Dread has since earned itself a cult following with its intense action, humour and violence. All of this, along with Carl Urban's excellent lead performance, have led to calls for a follow-up to be made, which is now more likely to happen in the form of a TV show, although that too is making slow progress. Alex Garland had plans for a full trilogy, which would explore more of Mega City One's origins and introduce characters like Judge Death. There's a lot of potential there, so fingers crossed the TV show will be able to live up to it. Number one, The Dark Knight Rises. Although The Dark Knight Rises is arguably the weakest entry in the Chris Nolan Batman trilogy, it still does a great job of rounding up the series, with Batman getting his happy ending with Selina Kyle. We also see John Robin Blake inheriting the Batcave, and that would have been a great moment to start off with a new series. Had Warner Brothers actually wanted to continue the franchise, it would have been so simple. Just bring back Gordon Levitt as Robin slash the new Batman, and explore what it really means to be the Bat, and whether anyone can take up the symbol of the Batman. It just would have been really cool, and considering how underwhelming the DCEU has been since Chris Nolan left it, probably a better shout than what we ended up with. And there you have it folks, six comic book movie endings that really deserved a sequel. Don't forget to leave a comment with your own thoughts down below, as well as like, share, subscribe, and visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. I'm Will for What Culture, and thanks for watching.